This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Monday, May the 6th, 2019. In the traditional Roman calendar, today was the feast of the attempted martyrdom of St. John, just outside the Lateran Gate, a stone's throw from the Lateran Cathedral. The Roman authorities set up what amounts to an iron hot tub. They filled it with vegetable oil and then they built a fire large enough to bring it to a boil. And then, rather than introducing lightly breaded chicken thighs with a buttermilk egg wash, being careful that each piece has enough room to fry evenly, they put St. John the Beloved Disciple in the oil. Now this was 95 AD, so John was old and he was the last of the disciples to be alive. Well, he sat in the boiling oil for several hours, completely unfazed. It was one of the oddest miracles in the early church, and the emperor, Domitian, was not happy. In part, probably because he didn't get his golden brown and delicious fried chicken, but mostly because he was robbed of the chance to martyr the last apostle. This was the incident that got John deported to Patmos. And within the year, he would stand in a cave on that island and dictate an apocalypse which we now call the Book of Revelation. In 1937 today, the German Zeppelin Hindenburg caught fire. Within 60 seconds, the entire airship and all 36 passengers on board were killed instantly. The onlookers in Lakehurst, New Jersey were speechless. And a commentator on the scene who was making a report on live radio famously watched in horror, crying out, The Humanity! the humanity. Today in 1949, the EDSAC, the first practical, electronic, digital, stored program computer, ran its first operations. This was the precursor to so-called general purpose computers. EDSAC, Electronic Delay Storage Automated Calculator, had a simple programming language and very specific tasks it could accomplish, mostly involving squaring numbers and doing square roots. The programs were fed on paper tapes with holes punched in them into the computer. And although it seemed impossible at that time, within 30 years, a commercially viable microcomputer, which could be easily carried around and which used a display screen keyboard, and mouse would be on sale to the general population of the United States. Within 30 years of that admittedly amazing feat, Steve Jobs would walk onto a stage in California and unveil the iPhone. Today is the birthday back in 1868 of French journalist and novelist Gaston Leroux. He started out researching true crime mostly because he washed out of law school. His first success was the 1907 locked room classic, The Mystery of the Yellow Room. He wrote constantly and published many books, but his greatest success came in 1910 with a gothic horror novel called The Phantom of the Opera. His version of the story centers around a young girl who is trained to sing by an invisible angel of music, which she believes her dead father sent to her from beyond the grave. In reality, he is a hideously deformed man who is prone to violent outbursts and who has killed several people in and around the opera house with a magical lasso. After the prima donna is almost killed in an accident, the young girl has a triumph and on the same night meets a childhood friend, and of course now both of them have grown up and they're beautiful. They feel a romantic spark and they zip off for an impromptu celebration. Meanwhile, the opera ghost is not amused. And from there, hijinks ensue. The main lines of the story persist into the musical composed by Andrew Lloyd Webber in 1986 with some key distinctions. LaRue's book launched a reinvigoration of the gothic horror genre, and his keen interest in adapting his work for film set a pattern which persists to the current day. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.